Welcome back to the International Speech Contest. Before we begin, I'm going to call back up the contest chair, Linda Gaffer. Thank you, Ma'am Toastmaster. How many of you had the opportunity to partake of the delicious foodies that are over there? Who brought in the cheesecake? Bob Roman. Bob Roman. Bob Roman. Oh, thank you. Woo! He makes some. <laughs> also, our refreshments coordinator in Area 71, Area Governor, his daughter made the chocolate chip cookies. Oh. She was looking for, he told me that she was looking for an excuse to get into the kitchen. So I'm glad that we had the opportunity to give her an excuse. <laughs> Before we hold the International Speech Contest, I would like to conduct a brief awards recognition ceremony for the people in the West Division who have received an educational award so far this year. These members' names were given to me by their club presidents. If you have received an award but your name is not called during the ceremony, please see me after the contest. Each recipient will be presented with a certificate and also a coupon to our local Chili's here in Naperville on Route 59. When I call your name, Please come forward and be recognized. And this is going to be in numerical order by area. Area 71, Saturday morning workout. Very done. Her 
her second cabinet? No. Okay, cabinet communicator and her cabinet leadership certificate. <laughs> And the last person I cannot mention. They are contestants. So please help me congratulate our five award recipients. with exchanging all this information up here, we actually sometimes grab the wrong papers, and that's exactly what I did. <laughs> it's hard to introduce a contestant if you don't know their speech title. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're now prepared. Sandra Stein, first contestant. Do you carry? What labels do you carry, Sandra Stein?
When I mention the word label, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? A label on a can? A record company label? A mailing label? Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and honor guests, the kind of label I'd like to talk about are people labels. After a baby is born, they receive the first label. They are so-and-so's child. I received my first label before I was born, and that was unwanted. I knew this because my, father told, my mother told me the stories of how my father tried to force her to miscarry, the things that he did to try and kill me. Obviously, he failed, and he did change the, t the label after I was born to worthless. These labels set the stage for years of additional labels. <coughs> Black sheep <coughs> never amount to anything, and many more I can't possibly mention here. The neighborhood kids who bullied me, they added their labels. Stupid, ugly, and weak. Even teachers in school <coughs> added labels. Distracted, daydreamer. Is anybody familiar with this? I carried these labels with me well into my young adulthood. And by the time I was in my mid-twenties, I was severely depressed and on all kinds of medications. But inside, I knew that if I didn't do something, I wasn't going to be around much longer. I turned to people to try and validate me, somebody to say, you're OK. <coughs> But that didn't come. I tried professional help, and my first attempt failed miserably. I wanted to try again. My second attempt failed just as miserably. All they would offer me is a surface fix. That wasn't going to help. I didn't know what else to do. Those names were hurting me, tearing me down. What does somebody do when you're already kicked down to the ground? <coughs> the second professional that I tried gave me a new medication. And in my desperate attempt to find something to make me feel better, I took it. In the middle of the night, I woke up in this profuse sweat. My eyes twitched back and forth, my pulse raced, and my heart felt like it was gonna beat right out of my chest. I became severely agitated. I couldn't sleep, so I got up, and I paced around my little apartment. I didn't know what was happening to me. But as the minutes ticked by, my anger grew, and it grew, and it got to the point that all I wanted to do was take my fist and slam them through the wall. But then, I saw my sliding glass window, and I walked over to it, and I just stood there, <clears throat> staring. <clears throat> On one side, I heard demons taunting me, go ahead, run through it. Nobody's going to miss you anyway. Go ahead, kill yourself. But on the other hand, I heard angels pleading with me. No, don't do it. You don't want to die. Back and forth. Do it. Don't do it. I was angry. I didn't know what to do. They were echoing in my head. And finally, God, help me. I don't want to die. I got up the next morning knowing I had hit my rock bottom. <clears throat> but I also felt that God had placed it upon my heart. Try professional help one more time. I got a book and I looked through it and the name Weaver pops out right at me. So I went. And finally, finally I found somebody who's gonna get to the root of my problem and that was the labeling. 
Many people think that labels don't hurt, but they do. I think Julie Roberts said it best in the movie Pretty Woman, when she said, if you hear the bad stuff long enough, you begin to believe it. Hearing that I was worthless and stupid and all those other vile names tore me down. <clears throat> they hurt. They stole my ability to grow as an individual. I didn't know how to overcome it. By God's grace, Dr. Weaver was, not, was showing me how to overcome them. Not only by, by talking through it, but making me see my value and worth. And he used scripture to help me. The one that stood out most came from Psalm 139. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. This label gave me the freedom to overcome those other labels. Those labels don't define who I am, but this label not only defines who I am, but who I can be. This label lifts me up. Gives me room to grow as a person. One of the biggest lessons I have learned in my life, pain is inevitable. You can't run. You can't hide. It will happen. But suffering from it is optional. And that's where your choice comes in. <clears throat> The next time somebody puts a label on you, ask yourself, what kind of label are you going to let define who you are? Contestant number two, Jeff Stein. March 14, 1992. March 14, 1992, Jeff Stein. when everything changed, when you knew that nothing in your life was ever going to be the same. Madam Toastmaster, my fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, March 14th, 1992, that is the day I knew everything in my life was going to be different. It's March 14th, 1992. I'm a member of the University of Indianapolis speech team. And I have one last shot to go to Nationals. This is it. It's me and my friend, Troy Gambro. 
Now Troy, <laughs> Troy was a stocky, red-headed kid from Plymouth, Indiana, and he'd tell you that. Troy was an amazing speaker, but if you talk to Troy, he was more proud of the fact that he had sacked the quarterback of Notre Dame in high school football. <laughs> kind of what Troy was about. I'd give you a few quotes from Troy, but all of them would get me disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> but most importantly, <clears throat> Troy was my friend. He was the guy I'd watch Caddyshack with at 3 in the morning, the 15,000th time. He is the guy who I'd talk about girls with. He is the person who taught me that margaritas were good. <laughs> he was my buddy, my friend. So when I didn't want to go by myself, I asked Troy if he'd come with me. Troy looked at me and said, what else am I going to do on a Saturday? Let's go. So we spent the week training, preparing, and getting ready for March 14th. It's March 14th, 1992. It's really cold outside. It's dark. And it's, it's dreary. And we're waiting outside in our nice suits, and our ride is late. I look at Troy. Hey, I can drive this. I've been to Columbus before. No problem. <clears throat> Jeff, relax. They're just a little bit late. They'll be here in a few minutes. Our ride pulls up. We get in the car, sit down, sit in our seats in the back. We get about 10, 15 minutes down the road, we stop for breakfast. Have our breakfast, get back in the car. Troy and I switch seats, and I pull out my book to study. I am so tired. Maybe it's all the training. Maybe it was those margaritas at 3 o'clock that morning. <laughs> Maybe it was a little bit of both, but I'm just, I'm wiped. I, I just don't think it's worth it to keep going through this. So I decide to close the book and take a nap. That is the last thing I remember from March 14th. They tell me we crashed through a fence and we hit a tree. I broke my left femur in three places. It takes a sledgehammer to break a femur. My friend Troy died on impact. Do you remember where everything was and what happened when everything changed? At 19 years old, I knew my life was never, ever going to be the same. That things were going to be different. <clears throat> they tell you that you're going to get over it. That at time, it'll all pass. It never truly passes. How does it pass when you sit there and you ask yourself, the difference between you living and you being dead is one trip to McDonald's in which we switch seats? How do you know or deal with when you know that the only reason he was in that car was because you asked him to be there? I'd like to tell you that I'm truly over it. That But honestly, the only time I'm truly okay is when I'm sitting right up here on a stage like this in front of a bunch of people. Because if there's one thing that Troy gave me, it was the ability to get up here and talk to people just like you. For a long time, I'd forgotten about that. So five years ago, I joined Toastmasters. Try to figure it out and get back up here again. For five years, I've been trying to figure out how to give this speech, and each and every time, I fail. This year, I decided <clears throat> now was the time. But I realized that just wasn't enough. 
I realized what I needed to do was just not speak for Troy through myself, but by working with other Toastmasters. So I got involved. I became a VP of Public Relations for my club. I became a VP of Education for my club. I worked on the district. I showed up for every meeting. And any person who ever wanted to work on their speaking, I gave them time. Because that's what Trey would do. I'd like to believe that somewhere Troy's watching right now. <clears throat> he's probably downgrading me for a couple of things by now, but he's watching. Margarita in hand. Enjoying the show. March 14th, 1992, that is the day everything did change. It's the day I knew nothing was going to be the same. I learned it at 19. 21 years later, every day is better. And it will be that way. Thank you, Troy. Matt Toast. Contestant number three, Charles Bernstein. Common ground. Common ground, Charles Bernstein. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, distinguished <coughs> judges and guests. In school, I was taught that Abraham Lincoln was one of our greatest presidents, but I had no real understanding of why he was great. To my young eyes, he was just an unusual looking man with a beard and a hat on his head that looked like a stovepipe. I learned later he kept important papers in that hat. In the sixth grade, I had to memorize the Gettysburg Address. I wasn't really able to understand its importance either. And there, my insight into Lincoln's greatness remained, with very little improvement, well into adulthood. But over the last number of years, it seems, there has been in our public conversation, our popular culture, politics, increasingly more cynicism, bitterness, resentment, anger. Have we ever been in our lifetimes more bitterly divided as a nation than we are today? We may not literally be coming apart at the seams as we were in 1861, <clears throat> but our politics have become divisive and toxic. Radical Republicans and Democrats in Lincoln's time had no common ground. Today, Democrats and Republicans are growing farther and farther apart, barely, it seems, able to speak to one another. While our problems grow. That's why learning about Lincoln is important. 
Maybe his life has lessons for us today. He was genuinely able to inspire. His speeches touched people. A man who heard Lincoln speak in 1856 said of him, he was full of philosophy and could touch men's souls. The Battle of Gettysburg was the turning point in the bloodiest war in American history. The dedication of the National Soldiers Cemetery at Gettysburg was held several months after the battle. Edward Everett was chosen to give the principal address. He was the orator of the day. Former U.S. Congressman, U.S. Senator from Massachusetts, Professor of Greek, President of Harvard, Governor of Massachusetts, U.S. Secretary of State, a very accomplished and distinguished gentleman. Lincoln had been invited almost as an afterthought to provide a few words. Everett spoke for two hours without notes, <clears throat> eloquently, followed by Lincoln, who spoke for just under three minutes. The next day, Everett wrote to Lincoln, I should be glad if I could flatter myself that I came as near to the central idea of the occasion in two hours as you did in two minutes. Clearly, elegantly, powerfully, Lincoln gave purpose and meaning to the terrible, awful sacrifice the Gettysburg Address is one of the greatest speeches ever given. Lincoln is regarded by many as the finest writer that ever occupied the White House. Frederick Douglass in 1876 said of Lincoln, viewed from the genuine abolition ground, Lincoln seemed tardy, cold, dull, and indifferent. But measuring him by the sentiment of his country, a sentiment he was bound as a statesman to consult. He was swift, zealous, resolute, and determined. Very near the end of the war, in March of 1865, Lincoln gave his second inaugural address, ending with malice <coughs> toward none, with charity for all, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds. Can we bind up the wounds today? Abraham Lincoln is great because he overcame what seemed insurmountable obstacles to hold this country together and to end slavery. Many historians acknowledge Lincoln's political genius, but it was his humility that enabled him to reach out and find some common ground with those who opposed him. At the end of the war, Lincoln made generous proposals for reconstruction for the South in order to better bind up the wounds, to preserve and protect this union, this country. If all of us, ordinary people and politicians, academicians and journalists, those on the left, on the right, in the center, would learn more about this man and the life he lived, then maybe Mr. Lincoln would inspire us all to find a little more common ground. Couldn't hurt. Madam.
Toastmaster, we have all the ballots. Excellent. Now it's time to interview our contestants. So can the contestants please come back up? And timers, I'm told I have two minutes for each contestant. We're <laughs> all of <about it. clears throat> Closed because of health problems with my heels, uh, I went into the grooming aspect. I'm not great. I'm okay at it. <coughs> I'm, I'm honest. Yeah. So I guess that means that your first, what you list first is interest as animals. And let's see, some other uh, hobbies here or interests are reading, traveling, hiking, horseback riding, camping, dog showing, canoeing, and RV. Well, if you had to pick one, what one horseback pick? riding, <laughs> anywhere and everywhere. Yeah, I absolutely adore horses. Learned it was actually a gift given to me. I, I, I learned how to ride by myself. Um, how to? I can just—it's like a horse whisperer type thing. They just know we, just by touch and whatnot. I can communicate with the horses. Ah, that's terrific. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Too many left numbers to actually remember what the numbers are. I am also a member of Niles Township, which is 665, which I do know because there's only three left right. numbers. <laughs> and how long have you been in Toastmasters? I have been in Toastmasters now five years. <laughs> and uh, let's see, and what educational level have you reached? I am a competent communicator and I have my advanced leader bronze and I am one speech from my advanced community. Excellent. Okay. So, I'm not going to read, but what inspires you most? Um, what inspires me most lately is um, I decided to get back on kind of a health kit and really work on working on losing a bunch of weight. And I started around Thanksgiving. Show, I go about five, six days a week, and people would start walking up to me who I have no idea who they are. And be like, hey, I see you here all the time, great job, keep it going. And honestly, <coughs> it always seems to come at those moments when I'm just about at my last, I'm like, that's it, it's done. I'm dead, there's no more, I'm leaving. I'm totally spent. 
I'm not going to do it. But they've come at the right time and said the right things, and it, it helps me get further down. You know, um, I'll, I'll say the number so everybody can sit there and, and hear it, which is since Thanksgiving, I'm down about 88 pounds. Wow. wow. I'm sorry, what did you say? I, oh. I said you'd like to sleep. Ah, there you go. That's my mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, mom should know, right? <laughs> so, John, on behalf of Toastmasters International, I'd like to present you with the Certificate of Participation in the West Division International School <clears throat> Contest. Republicans is the name of the club, and the number, I would have to leave. <laughs> That's okay, my club has like seven members too. And how long have you been in Toastmasters? I've been in Toastmasters for a year, and as I said before, I was in for a few months, some number of years ago. And what educational level have you reached in Toastmasters? Uh, I finished seven speeches in Toastmasters. Excellent, so you're going to get your CC by June, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right? Yes. 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 And what inspires you? Well, I think I wrote down a couple weeks ago on that. And, but it's true. If you see someone struggling with adversity, at least if I do, and struggling successfully with great adversity, that can kind of get you out of yourself and make you realize that. So, Great. And what is one thing you'd like us to know about you? I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you're not. In comparison, don't. <laughs> in comparison to nothing, just in absolute terms. <laughs> you just feel it. Yes. Well, on behalf of Tuskegee International, I'd like to present you with a certificate of participation. Patricia Fripp is the absolute best speaker's coach you could find on the planet. Nobody else charges what she charges. And she's actually helped three of the most famous, most notorious speakers that we've already seen at our previous conferences. Such as Craig Valentine at the Fall Conference. And Darren LaCroix, I believe, about at the Spring Conference a year before that. This is an individual who is actually revered by speakers that go to her for help, even though they've already won. She's going to be speaking at three different times on Saturday. <coughs> and in the evening, Johnny Campbell. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. Our old <coughs> Johnny Campbell. Now, on Friday night, it was table topics and networking. On Saturday, starting very early in the morning, I know Two. some people have earned awards. Anyone who has earned an educational award from October 21st, 2012, up until, I think, like, April 19th or 20th. So how many people is that? Raise your hands. What do you got? 
Breakfast. Breakfast. Yes. Free breakfast. And as Michelle Cable says, the food is pretty good at that hotel. So a free hot breakfast. And as long as you're coming that early in the morning, you might as well stay for the banner parade. Yes. How many people have been in banner parades before? Okay, what do you get if you're the winner? Free, free conference. conference. Free registration at the next conference. So my club is getting free registration. We actually won the banner parade in the fall co conference. So it's a lot of fun. You have a 15 second, I think it's a how we inspire is the uh, topic that you're supposed to do. Just a few seconds, hold up your banner, you know, do something fun. There's judges and you may or may not win. If you don't win still, it's a lot of fun. Then we go right from there into business meeting. Business meeting. And you all want to be there, especially the president and the VP of E's, because we need you to vote. It's election time. So we're electing district officers for the next year. You want to make sure your candidate gets in that you want. And if you can't for some reason be there, then there's going to be a proxy that you need to fill out and get in so that your vote can be counted. Then from there, Lunch. After the business meeting? Lunch. 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 Patricia lunch. Business meeting. I take it a lot. Well, maybe it is. Yes, yes. lunch. <laughs> Patricia Fripp. And I don't know if you remember, but I actually put out an incentive <coughs> that if you brought us a lead for a new club and it actually um, got chartered by April 19th, you got free lunch with the Queen of Clubs. <laughs> Front row seat, free lunch. You don't want to eat with me. Free lunch. Front row seat for Patricia Fripp. There's still time to do it. Right now, I only have about three people that are sitting at my table. <laughs> and in the afternoon, we have all kinds of educational. Oh, also at lunch, we have the red carpet ceremony. So any club that's distinguished, anybody that earned educational awards, club ambassador, all those, you're going to be able to walk the red carpet and actually receive your award. I mean, how great is that? How many people actually get to walk a red carpet in their lifetime? Mm -hmm. It's a big hit these days. <laughs> and then we have educational sessions. We're going to have Patricia Fripp actually doing a coaching session in the afternoon that some people are going to get chosen to go up there. You're going to give a speech, and she's actually going to coach you and how you can get better. Then I think it's around 3 o'clock. We have the international speech competition. <coughs> from tonight will be one of the contestants, and whoever wins at the district level then gets to go to sunny Cincinnati in August <laughs> for the international convention and compete for a world-class champion speaker. Then we have dinner, and after dinner, of course, we have Johnny Campbell and some networking and whatever. So, I mean, how can you beat that? Yeah, you can. So get in and register. I believe there's still uh, early registration, discounted fares for you can uh, enroll your whole club. And everybody in your club and all your aunts and uncles and friends and cousins can all go too. <laughs> okay, so anyway, that is the conference. I hope to see all of you there. Next, if you saw any of the flyers up here, I've had a few promotional programs that I have going on to try to help people with membership. The one that I think is one of the most significant is the Open House Challenge. There's actually two different <coughs> ways you can win awards at the Open House Challenge. <coughs> and we have extended it from March 31st to April 15th. So if you hold an open house and there's a form there, you can get it online. You can submit it just talking about your open house, how you planned it, what you did on your agenda that was different, how many people invited, how many people joined. You go in a drive to win a video camera. <coughs> Not a gift certificate. A camera. Second way you can win with open house challenges, hold your open house. If you uh, get four people to join and you've paid your dues, actually I have resisted from saying that, but I'm going to <laughs> pay your dues by March 31st, then you can either win a new club banner, if you don't have one yet, or a banner stand, which is really nice after having to try to hang it on a wall, we hang it on a flip chart, things like that. Or if you have both of those, you can get then a set of advanced manuals. So that's the open house challenge. The other one I think is cool because I have 300 pins to give away. I'm calling the Buddy Up program. Now, how many people in your club have people that don't show up? You go, gee, I wonder what happened to Joe. No one calls Joe. Well, adopt somebody in your club, call them up, get them to come to the club, you know, get them enthused again, help them maybe do a speech or sign up for a role. 
there's a form that you can submit that your president of your club has to sign to say yes, they actually did call Joe and Joe did come to uh, meetings. And we have 300 buddy pins, really cool, that you can actually get at the red carpet. If you do that. A couple other things, oh, it's one plus one membership. How many people have heard that? It's actually a Toastmasters international program. And what the thinking was is, you just don't bring somebody you know, you don't know. You bring someone you know so you can twist their arm to join, right? So one plus one, so you actually have a person join. And if you get someone to join, you submit this form to TI. You will get a decal that says one plus one. You'll also get an autograph letter from the uh, international president and the CEO. And you go into the drawing for one of these lovely t-shirts. Yes. I know everybody wants one of those. Then, Top 20 clubs get $250 gift certificate. Top 5 districts get $500 <coughs> in gift certificates. Now, I thought we should add something. So we also have added on to it that the club out of each district or division, total of eight of you are going to get a gift certificate for the most members that you add. What else? Adopt the club. Okay, adopt the club. So some people don't want to sign up to be a coach for a whole year. They don't want to sign up to be a mentor for six months or whatever. There are so many clubs out there that need help. They have six members, eight members. They don't know what they're doing. They're struggling. <laughs> so if you could just give some of your time, just you know, attend three or four meetings, give them some leadership, give them some pep, get them on the track again, we then have, you're going to be a, uh, you get recognition for helping the club out at the spring conference. Isn't that wonderful? Yes! <laughs> well, now, we also have some club ambassadors. How many people know about club ambassadors? Never. Mm -hmm. Iqbal is keeping me very busy. I think he's up to 87. I, I get notes almost every day from Iqbal. And now he wants me to send him back a note saying, did you get it? <laughs> And it actually goes till June 30th if you want to walk the red carpet and get your club ambassador, and you have to do it before April 20th. You actually got to the end of the year. And Igbo, what's some reasons why you'd want to be a club ambassador? The bling. Other than he's just... I mean, it's just the pins. That's, that's a, no, I'm just kidding. There's a lot of reasons. I, I really find that when you are stuck in your own club and you see the same thing day in and day out, you grow stale. But when you go visit other clubs, you meet a lot of new people, you learn new ideas. One of the best ideas that I've ever seen that I've brought back to my club is for the word of the day. Many clubs like to just put one piece of paper with the word in front of the speaker. Why not go ahead and have it like this one club that I saw, four different sheets in four different areas of the room for the audience, the speaker, and two peripherals. That way it's a constant reminder. I thought that was absolutely fantastic. So I've learned things from other clubs, and I've met a lot of great Toastmasters and guests on the way. I think you could write a book. <laughs> who's, who's to say there's not one in the works? <laughs> <laughs> so with that, any questions? No. No. I know you, you want to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Toastmasters, we have another announcement. All right. Oh, a quick one from Tim Bolger. publicly thank Paul Racino for assisting me tonight in taping this conference. Yes, Let's absolutely. give him a big round of applause. <laughs> you guys produce some very good content. They're all going to be posted in every division, contest, and the conference. After the conference is done, at the District 30 website or at www.timsvideo.com, I have cards. We're going to make it publicly available completely for free. They're already up there is two plus years of contests and content. So I'm just going to say, please take a look and watch. Thank you. Thank you.
I want to give a big thank you to all of the functionaries. That's why even though we have three contestants for each contest tonight, we are awarding the first two trophies. So that being said, <coughs> let's start awarding the contestants their prizes. At this time, I would like to ask the highest ranking officer, Donna Weston, to come back up and help me pass out the trophies. <laughs> <clears throat> and as you can see, they, they are really beauties. Second place for table topics contest.